Okay, Ruler, settle down. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get pre-orders of all the upcoming Force of Will sets, as well as releases of previous sets after they come out, as well as FowlLibrary.com, a wonderful resource for deck lists, article discussions, and more. Check them out at FowlLibrary.com, as well as these amazing patrons. Special thanks to guest lecturer member, Vite Raman. Thank you for your support. Class is in session. Hey there, Rulers, Demo73 here. Welcome back to uh, the second episode, long awaited, of tutoring sessions. Brought to you with huge thanks by our uh, faculty member here, Diva Dan, uh, joining us here for some coaching and kind of talking through games. If you haven't already checked out our first episode, um, we did a while back, it was talking about Thief Mooge versus Violet. This video is specifically to talk about looking at one specific deck or one specific archetype and really talking through together what are things that we're looking for, what are things that we're interested in. Um, and Dan was the creator of this series uh, because he wanted his private games for being a member to go to be useful for the community. So uh, say hi, Dan. Hello, everybody. Yeah, it's we're been glad a long time. We're glad to have you here, my friend. Before we get started, I do just want to remind everyone that, yes, we're playing with 7th cards and ADW cards, but don't forget that uh, the new cluster, dual cluster, Game of Gods, is currently available for pre-order with Odyssey Games. You can check those out in the links down below. So, Dan, what, what are you playing tonight? What are we trying to, what are we trying to learn about? Uh, I'm trying to play with Beatrice. Okay, okay. <laughs> so the art for Beatrice is the ruler, and it's on the play mat, right, for the 7th as well. Is just to me, it's fantastic that the dark blue, the dark and light blue play. So just beautiful card. Love the idea of a null ruler, and so hopefully Belial can make her viable for maybe not a hyper competitive deck, but something that just won't get stomped by everything in the yard. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I am gonna be playing my um, utility Wolfgang, which is the red, white, black that we saw on the channel earlier. Um, the kind of point of this deck uh, again is to diversify the threats in the main board uh, so that it's not just get terminus or bust and um, because i found that in the current meta flexibility is key uh, and so sometimes you just lose your terminuses and you need to be able to find another way to find your lethal <laughs> so let's get started we'll do some d20 rolls and see who's going first that's a d10 i can roll the right die d20 oh man i'm gonna roll the wrong dice now there we go you are going first my friend all right Curious to see what kind of null stuff we're going to see out of this deck. Beatrice having access to only four cards at the beginning is a little interesting to me. Um, I do like the fact, though, that like Belial has some of the best early cards of any of the Fallen Rulers. So, you know, you only really need like one Prideful Rule to really start feeling good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's very true. All right, well, you know, in contrast of our last game when I was running that Thief Mooge and I feel like I mulliganed 600 times, I'm not going to, I'm good. I'm good with my four cards. Oh, I like it. I like it. Starting off strong. Okay. Yeah. You'll have to talk through us once we kind of go through this game. You'll have to talk to us what you decided to keep so we can yeah. kind of see it. So go to you. I've already done my mulls. I'm ready to rock. All right. I'm going to take a quick uh, screenshot here. So when we have that conversation, I'm able to sure remember. All right. Cool. Let's do this. I will call stone with Beatrice. Off to a good start with black white. Black white, can't complain about that. And then I will pay one white to play Belial's Messenger. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Get that 4-4 four, so four darkness the token. For the enter. Yeah. All right. And now let's make some counters. There actually is, I believe, a Fallen Angel counter that someone has made. If you use the insert card token thing on the side. Oh, I see that. All right. I'm going to make something just super generic. And then while you're going, just in the interest of... Sure. 
Yeah, not then you can find it. Television. Yeah. yeah, so I'll draw. I actually really do like this idea of an early start uh, going wide against uh, Wolfgang. Wolfgang can get, as we've seen before, Wolfgang's kind of natural weakness in the early game has been um, uh, aggressive decks. And so this is, I mean, you're slamming down suddenly nine damage in the air that I, mm -hmm. that they're both in the air and that's a problem. Um, so like, I, I like that start. For sure. Um, we're going to start with the residents of the Demonic World on the Wolfgang side. Because we, we feel pretty safe here. I mean, he's tapped out, so we're not... And thankfully, you're not a Stemma. If you were an Stemma player, we probably wouldn't go for residents here because we don't want to like generate free value for you. Um, that works, just for us to remember. Um, I'll go ahead and crack to go get a one-drop Demonic World out of my deck. One of our few outs to these kinds of go wide kinds of things is to take the thing that's more terrifying and permafrost it. Um, so normally we'd like to save this for like a Virgil, something that's like a bit heavier. But right now we're going to go ahead and hit that token um, just so we only have to deal with three damage instead of six uh, instead of nine. So we'll go ahead and tap down your token with permafrost. Right, and then tough. and then it won't get to recover at least for a turn so the beauty of against belial decks is even if we with him being tapped out um this permafrost like essentially stalls this for two turns because like even if yeah. he had he like if he untaps and casts prideful rule like i still have stalled it for a turn so that feels pretty good and then i'll pass that's all i got so pass to you all right untap all except for the one wide just went over that yep <laughs> don't forget to draw for turn can't argue with draw a card Ooh. all right this is a crazy deck we'll call stone for beatrice draw to play huzzah three color stones are always good this is good moving up in the world All right, I have options. You gotta love when you have options. I know, that's why I'm excited to talk about what I kept here. Yeah. All right, we're gonna pay one, one white. Sure. Mm. So when you're playing, so I will say this, you know, to kind of talk about this as you're thinking. Yeah. One, of, one of the things to think about that Belial brings to the table, which is really, really good, is the fact that Prideful Rule can hit any entity. Um, and in the Wolfgang matchup, one of the things that is kind of the most terrifying um, is uh, Jewel. The the one that, like, oh, I also, um, it has Eternal. I forget that it has Eternal, but it's this idea of the, it's the taxing mm -hmm. uh, one. And so the idea of, you know, thinking about do I prideful rule other demonic worlds to try to make the tax less for myself? Um, you know, do I do that reactionary when he plays the, the jewel? These are kinds of things like any Wolfgang matchup when you're playing as Belial, I think a big consideration is that Requiem jewel. Um, mm -hmm. Because the problem is pri some of your best removal can't stop Terminus because he has barrier white. Yeah. Um, so your your out to terminus as a belial deck is not taking damage for the turn which then which then makes it concerning when your god's arts cost you two cost you three um yeah. so it's that's just something to kind of keep in mind as you're like deciding plays here um because it, it it can get a little nutty based on how many um jewels you can't the the thing is the thing that sucks is you can't pop jewel because it has eternal naturally um, mm -hmm. but it is something to kind of like consider and play around to pop other demonic worlds or stuff like that. Hmm. And if you're playing All as right. Beatrice, Electo can force me to banish demonic worlds. You just can't banish, uh, again, you just can't banish, uh, Requiem Jewel. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. All right. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to tap for blue. Sounds great. Because why not play a Prideful Mermaid? Ooh, okay. I like this card. All right. 
Um, so I'll go and do the appropriate counters here in a second. Um, but we'll swing for, I just want to make sure resident ID memorial is not a flyer. All right, so we'll swing for three in the air with the bird. We'll take it down to 37. Yep, and then I'll go fix the counters over here because she'll be in 8-8, eight, eight, and then it'll be, or 800-800. Yeah. Be over to you. Okay, draw, then recover. Um, and then we'll call stone with our good friend. Mm. So now we're going to try to go to combat. We're going to start by going to combat. Uh, and we're going to poke, attempt to poke you for one with the residence. For one, you say? For one, I do say for one. I think I take the one? Yeah, I don't think there's necessarily yeah. anything wrong with just one. I'm sitting here looking at the card like, what am I missing? It seems like it's a lot scary. Yeah. Um, uh, then I, I'll go ahead and banish um, residents to produce one black, which can be used yep. for Wolfgang's ability. Yep. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and attempt to cast Requiem Jewel. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a yep. good card. It's not a bad card, yep. Um and so then when Requiem Jewel comes into play, if Requiem Jewel comes into play. Yep, I got nothing to stop it. Um Demonic the Residence gets to come back. Which yep. is a which is a little nuts. Um and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna banish residence to produce a second um thing. Uh, and then we're going to um, go search for a two drop off of uh, off of Wolfgang. Yep. So then Wolfgang's gonna go give me a thing. We're gonna get this one, which will recover my two stones, and also bring my residence back. This is still tapped. This is not a stone. It does not get to untap here. Oh, wait, no. no. It does. I haven't used it for anything. I used the two. I'm silly. Um, and then at that point, um, I use Wolfgang. Ba, 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 ba. We pass. All right. At the end of your turn. Yes. I will pay one white. Yeah. And I will quick quack cat. Oh, no. That's the wrong card. No. Oh. Prideful rule. Cast the prideful rule. Yeah. And knock out that permafrost. That makes that is the good choice. I agree with that with that target because now you're gonna have another token on field. Everything on your board is flying. Yep. Um, which feels real good, and you're gonna get to put in a lot of pressure. And that's gonna come in as a six as well. Yep. All right, now everything recovers. Yeah. Card. So the biggest thing to kind of take into consideration with Wolfgang is that he doesn't have a ton of spot removal. Um, mm -hmm. Typically what, what we've been seeing from Wolfgang in terms of removal has been shifted to Garians to be able to kill Black Witches. And mm. f and fallen angel of the black tears to try to answer black witches. <laughs> you know, oh, those are nice. those are the biggest things that because Wolfgang thrives on his search. Um, okay. So the the cards that he has, however, added to his repertoire outside of removal has been uh, graveyard of Amadeus um, to be able to like recover life. So like if you haven't killed me, I'm just going to heal back up. Um, and then the other things to always be considerate of as a Wolfgang is even if I'm not trying to kill you with Terminus, two demonic worlds is a neg eight, neg eight to your board for an entire turn. Yeah. Um, so those are like things to consider as like, how wide is my board going to go? Can I keep him yeah. off of two demonic worlds and those kinds of things? It's, it's a tricky balance. Um, so these are just the kind of things to kind of keep in mind as you're trying to figure out the the pacing of what to do against a Wolfgang deck. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of a lot of good threats you have there. All right, so we will call stone. 
Sure. Do you want to play? Huzzah. All right. We'll swing with Belial's messenger. Can't stop it. Three damage. Cool. And then we'll swing with Fallen Angel one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Down to 27. Fallen Angel two. I think I did too much damage to myself. It should be a 28. Down to 22. And then eight. Down to 14. Um, cool. All right. We will, we will pass turn from here. Okay. Sounds good. Draw. Uh, so Wolfgang is going to, um, trying to think here. Vanish. To produce one mm -hmm. to attempt to go get a one drop before recovery okay right that's gonna go get me a handy dandy graveyard which will then bring back this lady uh graveyard trigger mm -hmm. attempt to gain three grand life go back up to 34 Mm -hmm. Or, uh, yeah, 34. And then attempt to move to recovery. Recovery good? Mm -hmm. yeah, Great. Recovery good. Recovery good. Awesome. Uh, at this point in time, we're just going to pay two. Make sure I'm tapping this properly. I'm not stupid. Using the coin. And we're going to try to do judgment. Ooh, okay. Yeah, judgment's good. Um. So... Uh, then the answer effects of judgment goes on the chase. So mm -hmm. I'm attempting to get a demonic world. Um, and the thing to note is that Wolfgang can get one, he can get any demonic world here. And two, he himself counts as a demonic world right now. Um, so there's a world where like, it's this weird world where sometimes it's best to kill him before, but then by doing that, you possibly let your opponent have flexibility in what they grab. Whereas other times it's best to kill like after they grab so you can be the most reflexive, right? And it really comes down to how many demonic worlds I have. Because your base, your stat line is so large right now, like your smallest thing is five, I would have to grab like a forest of darkness would only kill your Belial's messenger. So I'm probably not grabbing a forest. Um... So that means that you, if I'm not grabbing forest, it means you always have a chance to be able to respond to whatever demonic world that I'm having. So okay. if I'm in your position, I'm probably not responding to Wolfgang's enter. Like I'm waiting to see what comes out of the Wolfgang enter. And then if I have more prideful rolls in hand, then I may be killing that way. Okay. Um, that's just my personal choice. Um, yeah, that sounds, um, that sounds like a good plan. So I will go get a, a demonic world. We will grab the very traditional uh, paradise of fallen angels, um, and then this will attempt to trigger. And it, when this trigger resolves, at as it stands right now, I can grab five cost worth of demonic worlds from my hand or from my deck. Uh, five cost of fallen angels from my deck and put them into hand. Uh, yeah, it'll trigger. Resolves? Yep, yep. Great. So I only have four. <laughs> uh, so, because the other one's in my hand. Um, so we grab Terminuscent, uh, Terminuscent Belial. Mm -hmm. Um, and as it stands right now, Belial will have Swiftness and Barrier because of Fallen Angel of the Chasm. Um, and he has Barrier White. Um, currently it costs you... Oh, I also get a stone into play tapped. I always forget this off of Wolfgang. That... Irrelevant. Uh, thank you, stone. Um, <laughs> that doesn't do anything. Uh, so as it stands right now, because your current God's Art tax is five, 
um, I feel pretty comfortable as the Wolfgang player to say, I'm going to try to go to combat. Mm -hmm. And we're going to attempt to attack you uh, for uh, 10 in the air. Um, yeah, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, there's nothing reasonable I can do about that. So 10 in the air. Um, don't you have that? Did you have Belial's him to make a token and pup, then buff all your other tokens? Ten in the air. Because right, because because the thing is here, if you let this ten in the air go through, right? Yeah. In response to no blocks, I'm gonna make it so that as soon as this terminus hits you for damage, I win the game. Recover. Rest three recovered demonic worlds you control. Oh. I'm, I'm going. Yep, yep, I'm going for the yep. instant kill right now. Oh, yep. I was so focused on that first one. Okay. Yep, yeah. Nope. Yep. Because yep, I have it in my hand. I was trying to save it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, um, the reason why this is good is because if uh, because this creates a uh, f like all part of the resolutions is making it a four four, then giving it a four four. Um, mm -hmm. rules process doesn't interrupt. So right now, if I um, want to kill this, e even if I wanted to be able to kill this token, because it, it'll mm -hmm. be a 10-10, um, I'd, I'd have to tap down uh, four demonic worlds, um, which is too many, <laughs> uh, because yep. then at that point in time, my Belial can't lethal you. So that's why I'm saying like this play feels pretty good. Yeah. Um, I'm still going to respond to it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, do... Well, I'm going to draw a card from Belial's Hymn, too. Yeah, we're resp we're responding to the cast of Belial's Oh, Hymn. you're responding to the cast. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and respond to the cast uh, to apply that neg 8, neg 8 to your board, mm -hmm. um, which will kill everything, including the token that comes into play for Belial's Messenger. Um. But then Belial's Hymn will resolve. You'll have a token that's technically a 2-2 for the turn. Um, and then uh, you'll still draw a card. Okay. And then you can try to block with the token. Yes. All right. So I'll draw the card. I'll get rid of all those other tokens. And I'll block with my 2-2. Two -two. Sounds great. I'm not going to do anything about that. That token is just dead. Um, we'll find it. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and pass turn there. Does Terminus die for my token having Bane? Oh, your um, token does have Bane. Yeah. I messed up there. That's a misplay on my part. Yes, my Belial is now dead. Okay. I didn't yeah, think sorry, about that. I thought I was missing no, something. No, I thought I was you, missing something there. That is a misplay on my part. Yes, you are correct. He has the bane. So in that case, <laughs> things are going to change a little bit. Um, We're going to play one. Play a second Fallen Angel of the Chasm Ooh. from hand. So now we have this nice little barrier lock here. Yep. Uh, and he gives all my other Fallen Angels swiftness. So um, once again, you're taxed. So we'll go ahead and swing in for seven. Yep. And then four. And then four. To so go ahead and get that 15 in. Oof. Oh, he's dead. Yes, he's that. Dead. And, and, his, and, oh, and the token right. that he generated also died, unfortunately. Yeah. Then we pass turn. That's all I got. All right. Uh, at the end of your turn, we'll tap for yellow. Sure. Then I'll play Choir of the Fallen Angels. I wouldn't do that at the end of my turn, because as no? it stands right now, you still have a negative eight, negative eight to oh, your board. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so before I tap on my turn. Yeah, like even before draw on your turn, you can yeah. you can make the token. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about the. Yeah, that's the crazy thing about Terminus is he just a... and that's the thing that a lot of Wolfgang players I think 
that are having a lot of success right now are shifting to is like we've we've kind of moved away from trying to instant kill you and we're mm. just we're just gonna keep your board like permanently negged yeah yeah because you know now that we have the instant kill was threatened a lot by belial existing so now we're just like well yeah but we have boon so like we don't really have to worry about you not taking damage so we will just grind you out and we'll and we'll get the pressure there yeah all right um so i do for turn yeah call stone draw to play hey look at that Oh. There we go. Alright, four stones open. Um, so this is kind of weird, but I th think the correct play here is to go white and play another Belial's Messenger. Sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't hate that play at all. I mean, currently you're 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 staring down a lot of damage, um, yeah. uh, I mean, from it's... from two things that fly, like four yeah. fours that fly, um, and you know a ruler. The terminus is dead, right? So you can kind of reestablish. Um, yeah. And there's there's almost a like, it's one of these things where, I don't, again, I don't know what your hand is. It's one of these things where there is. A world where you consider a Belial judgment to have some drain mm -hmm. on this kind of blocker wall because like his God's art's not doing you anything right now and neither no. is Beatrice yeah. Um, yeah. the the fear there becomes do I have another terminus right yeah um, that becomes the biggest fear um, but I think like in this situation without knowing what's in your hand like be unfortunately in this situation Beatrice's flip doesn't do you anything because of like the barrier lock that I have on my resonators. Um, so like yep. the only thing you'd be bouncing is residents and I'm like, okay, that she's worthless right now anyway. <laughs> she's not doing yep. anything. Um, so a flip to a Belial reestablishes a wide board, which feels pretty great. It pumps up all your tokens, which feels pretty great and sets you up for this kind of drain to be able to keep yourself in the game. Yeah. Yeah, I th think that is probably my best option here. Sure. To go darkness and white. Flip Lyle. So two more four fours are coming in. And they're now eight eights with Bane and Drain. All right, I gotta make a note that if I play this uh, next week, to have plenty of tokens ready to go. Yes. And dice. <laughs> yes, tokens and dice. Yes. All right, I got one stone open. Ah, uh, I don't feel like there's a reason. I'm trying to decide on how aggressive I want to be right here. Sure. But I think, yeah, I think if you do, if, I mean, if you have another Terminus, it's over no matter what. Right. Yeah. So there's no reason not to play Wall of Terror. Oh, that seems good. Yeah. And then you can even discard a card and get to Null right now if you want it. Yeah. Because then Beatrice will draw you an extra card anyway. Um... Uh, I probably should know the answer to this, but if I have a card in my hand that has a null call, like, all right, so I got, this is my other Yeah, card. okay, if this is a free, great right? question. Yes, you yeah. may pay that for free. Yes, you can okay. absolutely cast that card for free right now. And then while that's on the stack, draw, oh no, because my gods are, oh no, you chose Belial for... Oh no, the, the tax is any gods are just more expensive. Any gods are, okay, yes. any, okay, so... But if that tax wasn't there in response to that, I would trigger. You could Beatrice. do God, yes. You could do God's Art Greed to okay. draw two cards, yeah. and then Voice from the Void would draw you another card. Yes, okay. that is correct. Cool. It's one of those things that you like think about when you're drawing up your deck. And then... yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. 
we are ready to go. So there is one thing that I would recommend here. Yep. Um, I don't know what that card that you just drew was, but if it's any kind of good, then mm -hmm. obviously you want to keep it. But you're also tapped out, so mm -hmm. there's a there's a world where you discard it to Wall of Terror, and then when Beatrice's Null trigger goes on the chase, you respond with the voice from the void from the graveyard, and then you go into my turn with two cards, which gives you two chances to give Barrier as Wall of Terror. Because, like, you're not casting those cards regardless, right? So having yeah. having two chances for Barrier when you're trying to, like, reestablish is better than having one. Is my thought. Ultimately, you don't have to. That's what Tutoring Sessions is all about, right? No, it's no, just no, talking no. through yeah, the that's sessions. Good... That's, that, that's actually pretty... That's a good line, I think. At the end of your turn, draw a card. Yeah, yeah so you have to have been at null first. So you'd have to, yeah. like, as you move into your end phase, discard that card in your hand with Wall of Terror. Yeah. Giving something there. We're going to do that. Yeah, sure. Um, oh, yeah, because it comes open no, no, um, open info when I discard it. Yeah. So, because I always can bring it back, I guess, with remove three resonators from your graveyard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. That's what I think there's a, makes there's it actually, a no-brainer. So there's actually yeah. even a crazier world here, right? Um, and hear me out on this. Yeah. Uh, oh, you only have two resonators in your grave. Ah, darn. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> I thought we maybe had one more. Uh, because I was like, maybe you could just remove it now and make me start sacking stuff. Um, but yeah, the you can always bring the electo back later. So yeah, putting yeah. it in, putting it in graveyard and setting it up so you have two cards in your hand to be able to double protect. Right mm -hmm. now seems best, right? Because outside mm -hmm. of a terminus, all of Wolfgang's removal is spot removal. So yeah. trying to be able to like have the barrier from Wall of Terror feels pretty good. Yeah, and there's no way that I'm getting up to negative eight. Uh, on uh, like, I'd have to have so much in hand that are all demonic worlds to be able to get to a dark forest because I'm out of searches, right? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, oh, that's a good point. Yeah. So the way this works is in response to in response to Beatrice's null trigger. You would then cast Voice from the Void from the Graveyard for free. It'll go to the RFG, and then you'll have two cards in your hand. Okay. Uh, okay, yep. All right, I understand that. The Voice from the Void because of Remnant, right? Yeah. Why it's being played, yep. And then it goes Expel, and I draw another card. Yeah. So one for the trigger, and then one for Beatrice. Yep. All right, cool. And we'll go to my turn, and we'll untap stuff. This, da, da. And un unfortunately, I didn't draw Terminus, but I <laughs> but I did draw another one of these, um, which gets me a Terminus. Yeah. Um. Uh. Actually, even even more so. I'll just because I know where I'm at. I'll just grab a a, um, a Fallen Angel of Black Tears because I have five Demonic Worlds. Um, so that'll apply a negative 12, negative 12 to your side of the board, which will wipe it and then we'll swing through for lethal. So, but if that had not been the top deck, um, yeah. the, the play line that we took was absolutely the correct play line to be able to reestablish, um, because all, all of the stuff in my hand was all spot removal. Um, so at that point in time, like if I try to swing with anything and try to kill anything that you try to block with, that I try to block you with, or that you try to block me with, you have the two cards, right? I've got yeah. literal. I have literally two pieces of spot removal here in my hands, and you have two barriers. Um, yep. So like you're you're well off. Um, sometimes that's just the outs, right? Wolfgang does oh, have yeah. have the ability to kind of pull out those kinds of things, but. You know, that's what this is about. Sometimes you just need to walk through what the line is, what the line should be, um, and, and play to the outs, because that'll absolutely come up. I mean, if this if this G past GP at Minnesota showed us anything, it's always at least play to the out. <laughs> yeah. Because you never know if that'll be what what's needed. And I would like to share something real quick in my yeah. hand. I think yeah. It's weird that's going to happen. So it, it wouldn't affect here because I'm too low of life. Sure. Right? But I could discard in response to... Um, 
what's his face hitting the field fallen angel Determin with yeah so fallen angel hits the field i discard all right so this is in my hand oh so sure when it goes to my discard i can then banish three resonators oh do i have enough yeah you should yeah because so you use the three. other the other electo yeah and then two others yes yep so prideful goes prideful mermaid goes out uh Belial's him goes out or Blau's messenger sorry goes out and then he hits the board yep and then i play a voice from the void for my hand for free for free which yep. gets me a draw which forces you to banish yep i would probably banish the residents yeah but then unfortunately that plan loses juice but what's the other card in your hand if i can ask uh, oh yeah it was just um the one i just drew was choir of fallen angels okay yeah so there's a yeah. so there's a world where you could make me sacrifice two things but like yeah. you said i'm i'm too low you're too low on life oh yeah because yeah. um, what you could do is you could discard the choir of fallen angels recast the voice from the void for free from the graveyard draw another card force another electo sack yeah. um so there's like there's that world um unfortunately but even then even even if i had sacrificed those two things like if we had gone through that i still hit the board wipe and then i still have enough damage here for lethal oh yeah um but you're on the right track in terms of thinking about how electo works like it's very easy to chain electo together in a nuts way um yeah yeah you can you can definitely do a lot um especially since belial also draws you a card on god art side and Beatrice also draws you a card, you know, from Greed. Like, there's a there's a lot of card draw there. And, you know, this deck is probably open to a lot of, like, fun gambler's fallacy, right? Of playing Null and top decking. Oh, yeah. Right? The, the correct card. And that probably won't happen enough. But when it does, even if you're, if you're at locals, if you're playing in a, in a, in a real game or whatever, it's going to feel good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Having played, uh, I played Blue Violet you know for the channel a few mm -hmm. weeks ago and it's that same kind of it's like getting what you need and then like figuring out how to combo the the voice from the voids together multiple times to like make it go crazy and yeah you get it gets pretty pretty nuts what what was your keep can we talk about okay. that yeah good point all right uh bring up this photo real quick all right so my four cards were belial's messenger belial's him wall of terror and prideful rule Okay, so I get only... the the prideful rule and the wall of terror make a lot of sense. Yep. So after playing the game, I don't know. Belial's messenger is nice to get a turn one trigger right away. To get yeah. Two creatures on board. So maybe it, maybe there's a world where Belial's him gets uh gets mulligan yeah i think i think i would probably have mulligan belial's him because it's a two drop yeah um because because it's a two drop and i i also might have i also might have mulliganed the messenger um okay. because i i think when you're dealing with a wolfgang deck as a deck that has electo um let me pull up electo real quick just so i can read it so i don't forget exactly how it works yeah um electo banishes a non-magic stone non j ruler entity so electo forces me to banish anything that's not a stone or a j ruler which means he can hit my additions yeah um so there's a world where playing belial's messenger gives me a permafrost target on one ah uh, yeah which um limiting the things that i can grab in the early game that generate me like value or steal tempo from you is a good thing to do against wolfgang right yeah because the the common one drop because wolfgang can only grab uh demonic worlds that he hasn't art that he doesn't already control mm -hmm. so typical one drops are permafrost um graveyard and uh the zombie palace those are the three like one drops that were okay, yeah. and or or oil pond oil pond is another one that 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 gets splashed in i think i actually am not running oil pond anymore um i don't remember <laughs> uh but you know permafrost i'm not gonna grab unless my opponent has a thing on board 
um uh, in terms of on turn one right um yeah. graveyard i'm probably not going to grab turn one because that means i can't grab another one later when i need more life um so that leaves me with a turn one like token generator which at that point in time like a prideful rule just by itself answers that because yeah. you you kill you kill the um you can even respond to the token generator's trigger with a prideful rule, and I don't even get a token. Because uh, it because it counts yeah. at resolution of the ability, and I'll have zero I'll have zero. Um so I think there's a in the couple early turns, I think it's about making Wolfgang's demonic worlds like you want to naturally limit the demonic world choices that I have. Yeah. Um until you can set up Electo. Um, yeah, because because once you can set up Electo, like, if I can't keep a board of Resonators on, like, okay, <laughs> like, I don't know what I do there, right? <laughs> um, you know, yeah. if, if I can't keep Resonators on board, because I don't, Wolfgang doesn't run a lot of Resonators, right? So if you can get an Electo set up, um, and just keep, keep me, keep my Demonic Worlds having to keep forcing them to be banished, then, like, I'm in a, I'm in a real bad spot. You know, I can't grab Terminus from the deck if my Demonic World count is two. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Um, the tax to my God's Art, your God's Arts is never going to get higher than one. You know, um, yeah. so the the thing about, yeah, that's the biggest thing about Wolfgang is you just got to find, you find the paths to almost kind of make Wolfgang's decisions on what Demonic Worlds he can grab for him. And that's when they start to feel awkward. So that's something to consider here as we go into game two. Okay, cool. Appreciate it. Would you like to go on the play or the draw? Uh, I think play is good with this deck. Sounds good. Play. Yeah. I will add a counter and we will get it started. Draw two, four. Oh, I get to draw four cards or five cards too. I. Bottom of deck, bottom of deck, bottom of deck. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. I think I'm making. I'm, I'm ready to. Bad mistake. I think I'm. I think I'm gonna keep here. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Um, call stone. Loving that black white start. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll pay the one. Uh, no, we'll just sit here. We'll pass. Yeah, I think that's probably the right call. Yeah. Um, because this, because what also this threatens is like I haven't seen enough of like in game one, right? I haven't seen enough of the deck. Yeah, I I personally haven't seen enough of your deck to kind of know what I'm safe to be able to do. Um, so I have to be a little bit cautious, right? Because like Black Witch is a problem, you know, still something. I by leaving one wheel up, Black Witch becomes a po possible answer. Um, you know, I have to worry of like stuff like that. But it's still threatening a prideful rule. Um, the like again, you're trying to make my decisions for me. Um, yep. So we're still going to try it uh, because I am on the draw. We're going to go for it. We have residence and we're going to attempt to crack residence to get one will. And then we're going to attempt to search if that's okay for a one drop. Yep, that's going to go. Great. And we're going to do exactly like I said. We're going to grab that handy dandy. Um, actually, you know what? We are going to grab knowing that it's a Belial. Go back in the deck, please. I am still playing it. We're going to grab an oil pond. Oh, uh, nice. So we are going to grab this oil pond. Um, leave my check for how many we have. Demonic worlds for later. Uh, and that gets to bring me this back to field. And then we pass. That's all we got. All right. So we will do... Uh... End of your turn, pay one yellow. Sure. Pay one white, sorry. 
Um, and we'll do Choir of the Fallen Angels. Yeah, 6-6 six, six token. Yep. Mm-hmm. Fallen Angel. Cool. See, see, the reason why I like this play compared to last game, right, is yeah. you're still threatening just as much damage. Like, you're you're threatening more damage because also right now, like, um, the Belial's Messenger you played on turn one sure it generated another body, but that body wasn't able to even attack yeah. um, because it had to wait a whole turn. This way with Choir, like, you still get that body, and now it gets to immediately attack. It doesn't have to wait as long, yeah. um, which feels a lot better. Uh, we will recover. We will draw. Beatrice will call stone. Sounds good. I just want I want her to feel like she's contributing to the team. Yeah, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I hear that. 6 eight stone, she gets to recover now. Nice. Now she really gets to contribute. All right, I think the correct play here is blue. Is it blue? Is it... If it's a wall of terror, I would agree. No, it's not. All right, so we're going to go yellow. We're going to go white and white. We'll do a Belial's him. Okay. And we're doing that because this will be a 10 10 this turn. Sure. All right. Does is there. Fall? So let's let's yeah. talk about this. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, is tapping out uh, to get f 10 damage, to get four more damage this turn, worth more than leaving stones open? And just ex being okay with the six. Well, when you say it like that, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, yeah, because we, did, I mean, we just had that conversation, right? And I'm not necessarily trying to go full aggro. I'm right. trying to, yeah, yeah, because I have options here if I stay open. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, so we'll just come in and swing for six. Yeah, we can't stop it. Like that's a free safe. Yeah, that's yeah, a free yeah, safe I mean, six, right? Um. Like, there's nothing that I would have for one black that could kill that, right? Uh, I mean, like I can... temptation to go full aggro when you're sitting at half, half life on, with Belial. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. No, I get that. Gotta, I get that for sure. Yep, I, I get that for sure. Um, it, it's one of those things where you also... I, get, I see players get into this mindset a lot, too, of um, you have to recognize that your opponent probably also isn't playing stuff with swiftness. Yeah. Um so like trying to trying to balance yourself of like well if if they're going to play something that has swiftness I've got some time. Yeah. Or, or, or if they're playing stuff that doesn't have swiftness I have time. Um so your life total being low can kind of pressure you out of that thought of like remembering like hey my opponent has to have fast stuff otherwise I'd get time to be able to respond to them. Um, right, yeah. and so it's kind of more like, do I need this four damage now, or do I need these two will for something else for later? Yep. All right. Yeah. So after that, um, I'll pass turn. Sounds great. So I'll draw. I'll recover. Call stone with my friend Wolfgang here. Draw to play. Six sage stone. We like to see that. Um... And I'll go ahead and attempt to go combat. Uh, yeah, good. And I'll try to poke you for one. Uh, we'll take the one. Heck yeah. Then we're going to banish a residence to produce one black. And then we're going to attempt to cast Jewel. This is going to look very familiar for your opening turns. Mm. We're going to attempt to cast Jewel. Uh, Jewel Jewel's good. And that gets me another residence. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going to crack residence for another black. And we're going to attempt to search for a two drop. Uh, yeah, good to go. Great. This is going to look also very similar. Yeah. Ta-da! Plane of Raging Winds. Which will then 
So Plane of Raging Winds is a... T so we're at this weird point where Plane of Raging Winds, even if you popped one of these, is still going to get to recover me two stones. Yep. Um, so that's going to just happen. Um, and then... This lady's back. I'm seeing this board state. I'm seeing what we've got. I can go up to... Don't have any way to protect him. Um... We'll pay white. We're going to attempt to play a graveyard. Hmm. Okay, yep. So this is going to gain me four grand. Yeah. Go up to 74. And then we're going to use coin and one, and we're going to judgment. Okay. Any response to Wolfgang's enter effects? No. Try to, no, no, no. Try to play. Gets me this. Any response to that? No, uh, nope. Which gets me both of these mad lads and a Terminus. And then we go combat. All right, so we'll go white, white. Sure. To play a Blyles him. Yeah. I feel like we've done this before. Yep. <laughs> you have that token. Yep. yep. I'm I'm gonna let the token enter. It's all good. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to swing ten. Uh, yep. We will block with our newfound token okay and then we're gonna apply a neg five neg five or next neg eight neg eight mm -hmm. and unfortunately we do have the way to give it a neg four neg four without having to tap two demonic worlds oh, you know, this nice. fallen angel black tears and yeah. then we and then we can tap three demonic worlds for an instant lethal odd terminus nice <laughs> So this is kind of this, the thing that we're talking about, right? In terms of yep. um, keeping the demonic world count low is what keeps Wolfgang away from his kind of pieces. Because um, the the longer, yeah. We, did we have a did we have a wall of terror in there? No, I wish so I had the electo. Yeah. Started with him. Started with the voice from the void. Yeah. Belial's messenger. And then the other card was the other one drop that was in my hand. So there's one yeah. other there's one other consideration that we can kind of talk about here, which I think uh -huh. is I think is relevant. Um, as the sixth boon is being cast, um, like as the sixth boon is being cast, especially since I hit a six sage stone, it becomes this question of like uh, I'm probably gonna get pressured this turn, right? So if we're uh -huh. rewinding, right? So as yeah. the six as the six boon is being cast, you can still do God's arts for zero. Yeah. So there's this world where you go, well, before that hits the field, I'm gonna do Belial's God's art right now. Draw a card. So even if you do go super wide, or even if you do pop off like I just did, the that Terminus can't kill me. Yeah. Um that's just something to be considerate of, right? Yeah. Um, and the weirdest thing about elect, the weirdest thing about Beatrice, I think, is that, um, because that also draws you another card, which gives you another option for, uh, Wall of Terror. The weirdest thing about Beatrice is that you, you want to have no cards in hand, so Null is kind of, like, designed to make it so you have less cards in your hand. The, um, the problem being that you need to be able to see the cards to set up the combo with her. <laughs> yeah. And so your mulligan is significant. You're, you're seeing fewer cards in your opener because of it. Um, so, like, you need... Uh, wall, like, the three cards you need are usually Wall of Terror, a Voice from the Void, and Electo. And once you get there, you can kind of really control the board, but you got to get there first. 
Yeah. Um, and that's kind of like the biggest thing to consider. So like in this scenario, when I went like this super wide, like I'm probably still going to push this wide. Um, even if you gods art, because, you know, then I'm just going to like set up a negate negate during your turn. Uh, and then like make it so electo can't come into play um but those are at least the idea of not not dying this turn um to try to like find your way there um the the gods are in response to the cast of six spoon seems important especially since beatrice can technically bounce the terminus back to my hand although not because i have the double barrier lock i just remembered that um the double barrier lockout yeah so no yeah, yeah. It, it is tricky are you are you playing black witches in the deck i think i have black witches boarded sure yep so that's deck, that's yeah. you know that's another thing to consider like fallen angel of the black uh of the witch of the fallen kingdom is yeah. a really good guard against wolfgang if you can yeah. keep it especially the idea of like having it's so, like in your deck the idea of having like a wall of terror and a witch would yeah. would be like my ideal. Yeah. Like so much so that if I didn't play anything on one, I would that would be the play that I would tap out for. <laughs> like that would be yeah. the thing where I'm like, I'm gonna tap out on two <laughs> and play yeah. this play this fallen angel of black tears and play this wall of terror. Uh just like right now. Um or, you know, in response to a surge during my second turn, just to be like, no, we're not doing that. I'm keeping this thing alive for forever. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, because, you know, the biggest the biggest weakness that Wolfgang has is when he can't surge. Um, yeah. And so that's the consideration, you know, coming from this for, like, what to board or even what to consider sideboard or main boarding. Just to yeah, be able to shore up. A, that's a good thing to bring out, too, with a Belial recommendation to God's Art. Um, because it's pretty much uh, you're you're gonna get terminus, right? Like there's yeah, you had you had to set up there to in yeah. response. I might as well get my draw right and um, survive another turn. Yeah, that's the whole that's the whole piece. Um, yeah, like Wolfgang is pretty. Jewel has kind of created this space for Wolfgang where he can snowball a lot more. Um, because of the fact that Jewel, like, sure, Jewel costs too, but then you think about, you think about in this situation where I played Jewel from hand, right? So yeah. Jewel technically generated two will for me, even though it yeah. cost me two, because it brought back residents from the grave and it then could tap. Yeah. Um, and I, I, and truth be told, I'm probably one of the few Wolfgang players that I've seen who likes having a jewel in their hand. A lot of them like to try to ha play just just one jewel and only in the deck, and I think that's mad. I think that's crazy. Um, but um, like you, like I said, there's no reason to not at least God's art, so you at least find a turn. Um, yeah. To to draw a card and try to figure out something else. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I really like Jewel. I, I I like that in the deck. Yeah, yeah. Only it's a... one seems seems crazy, especially if we're, you're you know you're expecting fall and you're expecting God's arts. Yeah, so, I, I I think my current highest tax has been sixteen <laughs> by having two two jewels out and eight demonic worlds total. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> uh, so it's just like you're just not resolving God's arts today. It's fine. Yeah. Um, which is really helpful when they're like, oh, my only out left is to flip into Stan. And I'm like, yeah, well, that doesn't even do anything either. Because oh. you don't you don't have 18, Will. <laughs> so I'm, oh. I'm sorry. That's gross. That's um, awesome. But yeah, that, that um, you know, I think those are the things to kind of consider. I think you're absolutely right. I think the early game mulligans need to look a little different. I think, you know, like we said, figuring out what the priority of the deck is in terms of, like, what what do i need in this moment like did you need that four damage did you need um you know those kinds of pieces um fallen angels are really complicated and they have so many moving parts um there's so many moving parts to them uh and sometimes it, it's it it's about getting the reps in to figure out when to use certain pieces so yeah. i hope this was helpful for you that was super helpful i mean i think you gotta see wall of terror 
Yeah. You, you got to see Walter in your hand with with some good setup, not to at least mulligan two or maybe even three. Just, yeah. Just to get that wall terror because you need to you need to get moving and you don't have a lot of cards to get the get the play set up. Yeah, that's that's one of the weirdest things is like Beatrice's downside actually is a downside. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to like Belial's like half life, but all my cards are great. Or, or yeah, Carlina, right. it's like, I can only cast one card a turn, but that card's a big bomb. Beatrice is like, well, I need my hand to be empty, and also it's harder for me to get my hand empty. Yeah, um, and I need these two cards to, to really start doing work, right? Yeah, and you really only ever need to resolve, um, you know, you need to resolve Electo. Or, yep. sorry, you need to resolve Wall of Terror, because, like, you can bring Electo back from the graveyard, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, it really is just about resolving Wall of Terror um, more than anything else. Um, but... You gotta find him, and that's the trickiest yeah. part. So yeah, that I was is. Sad. A couple yeah. of my last secret swords didn't show up. With yeah. A, with a wall of terror, that was like that's like the dream. Uh, yes. Guardian hand right there. Yeah, that <laughs> is that is the one thing that I've heard a lot of people say is you just you know do wall of terror with with last secret sword. It feels especially when you're on the coin if you're like on the draw because you can like coin out wall of terror, then last secret swords, then call stone, and you're just like ah yep. yes I'm in a good spot now. Yep. Um, I'm in a pretty good spot. So. But yeah, th this was good. This was fun. Thank you for, for spending um, your time with us here, uh, channel watchers. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If this is something you want to even maybe participate in as yourself, um, we do offer uh, private games uh, for some of our higher membership tiers, like our friend Dan is here. So go ahead and consider clicking that join button down below. We'd be happy to help. We also do deck doctoring for some lower level tiers if you're interested to get our feedback on some of your decks. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And Dan, we'll see you at the next tutoring session in the future. So um, thanks a lot, Dan. And until next time, this is DMO73 saying class dismissed.